share my screen and restart. So my topic today is um, a 13th version of Postgres. I will try to make some uh, overview of the new things uh, which appeared in this new release. And uh, we will discuss some of them, the mo most interesting of them. Okay, so uh, of course it is not a complete description of the new version because it is very big. Uh, if you want to know everything, you need to make a very big research uh, because there are multiple changes, but most of them are minor. So I selected uh, several changes which are, were um, most interesting and most important for me for the cases which uh, I work with. And uh, that's why I present you this uh, list of features, a uh, list of new things, which is, of course, not complete which is subjective and so on but uh, for me it's interesting i hope maybe it will be interesting for some of you too okay so uh, there are not uh, as many new features as we expected in the current 13th version but uh, some of them are very interesting and very promising so i divided uh, them into several groups which is uh, similar to the division of features in release nodes, but differs a little. So uh, there is a very important improvement with indexes and uh, some interesting improvement with vacuum, which will help many people. And also a bunch of different interesting things. Okay, so start. What happened to the indexes? Uh, from my viewpoint, the most interesting feature is the, the duplication of D3, uh, which was done by Anastasia and committed by Peter Gagan. Next thing which uh, doesn't make uh, many, uh, which probably is not obvious uh, now, uh, all classes with parameters, uh, which was made by Nikita, but it is very prom promising in long perspective in future because it uh, provides some new level of flexibility for Postgres indexing. Uh, also, Nikita made some improvements in K and N uh, algorithm. It's interesting itself, uh, though the improvement was very minor. But uh, it is a good reason just to remind what is K and N because. I think it is underestimated by community. It's a very good and interesting feature. Okay, so about B3, uh, the duplication. Uh, the problem is that if you have multiple uh, repeating keys in B3 index, then you store them many times, as many times as many keys you have. It is not very effective uh, from the viewpoint of memory and disk space usage. And that's why there was an idea to implement the uh, same uh, structure for storing the multiple keys, like in gene index, when the repeating, uh, repeating keys are stored just as uh, some reference list, which is also optimized by search. In fact, it's not a simple list, it has a little B3 inside. So, uh, but this is a very big task because uh, there are locks and uh, uh, con concurrent success. That's why uh, it, was, it took several years to implement and to commit this feature. But finally it was done and it works. Now we know that it works in several applications with high workload and it shows that uh, it's really uh, a good thing and uh, implementation is good. So the 13th version is not yet released, but uh, the same patch is included in Postgres Pro. And uh, we already have some real customers that use this feature. So uh, this can reduce I.O. and reduce index size in uh, uh, in synthetic cases as well as in practical cases, 
for several times. Um, please note that this uh, feature helps also for unique indexes because the unique indexes are not unique in fact due to multi-version concurrency. Uh, so uh, if you have high workload with updates then probably uh, this the duplication will still remove uh, will, will still uh, minimize the possible blows of these indexes because they, they will grow uh, at less speed. So it, it is a, a useful and prominent feature. Uh, you will probably notice uh, the decrease of I.O., the decrease of space, if you have a, a high performance application that was this. Next, operation uh, operator classes with parameters. Uh, this gives you possibility to make indexing more flexible to pass parameters uh, inside uh, the progress indexing deeply. For example, uh, you can use it to index some parts of JSON. Uh, you see, th there is some example, a list of options uh, in the bottom of the screen. Uh, you see a JSON expression, a JSON path expression, which shows that uh, only some part of JSON is being indexed. And uh, uh, these parameters uh, are connected with GIST index, and they show some parameters which uh, influence the performance of the index, the signature length, and number of ranges. Uh, today we have uh, the mechanism itself committed, the operators classes with parameters are committed, and uh, the parameters for uh, GIST index are also committed. The JSON parameters are not committed yet. Probably we will have it in 14th version. But uh, in general, this mechanism opens possibilities uh, for better indexing of JSON, for better indexing of any kind of structured data, uh, for indexing of uh, probably images, and so on. Everything that needs parameters to make the indexing effective. Uh, next small improvement with uh, indexing is connected with uh, KNN search. Uh, KNN search is a search of closest points and it needs uh, a distance operator, which is written like that. There already was a point uh, to box distance operator, but to uh, find uh, to find point uh, boxes close to some given point, you need uh, just to commute it to make a reverse operator. Uh, it is not not a principal idea of uh, KNN algorithm, but just an, an implementation feature, so it's, it's not symmetric. Though the operator itself is symmetric, but the usage in KNN is not symmetric. So what is KNN? Uh, I need to remind the KNN is an algorithm of fast search of nearest neighbors. Uh, it may be near, uh, neighbors in uh, uh, geometric space or neighbors in time, on neighbors in some space of texts, for example, similar texts or similar images can be found with this algorithm. The idea is uh, the following. So this is Siberia. Uh, suppose that you have a task of finding a restaurant. For example, if you um, try to search a restaurant in this area, probably you will find maybe one or two. But if you uh, try to search restaurant in, for example, Western Europe, which have some similar area, you will uh, find millions of them. Uh, the problem is that when you find closest things, you don't know, generally you don't know the density of uh, the items in space. Uh, that's why if you want to uh, what, what is the common way of finding closest uh, thing? 
you just take some neighborhood and you calculate the distance with each point of this neighborhood and then you sort sort them it is uh, rather slow and it requires you to make some assumption about the size of initial neighborhood maybe you find for example if you find restaurants in siberia you will you if you know the density you will take big uh, radius of, of the neighborhood just uh, because because you know the density map uh, in Europe you will take it smaller but in general you don't know the density and that's why you need to make some attempts to try and unless you find at least one one point in the uh, in this uh, neighborhood uh, of course if you search in that way it, it's very very slow and so on and so an algorithm is uh, created for search using index tree uh, it looks like moving in an index tree not from the root but uh, moving sidewards now I, I don't want to waste time on describing the algorithm itself I just want to give you the idea what is, what for it is necessary you may find uh, the description of the algorithm in presentations of Oleg Bartonov and he has an article in his blog about that and the main idea that it is implemented in progress it is very fast and if you uh, have a distance operator you can automatically use uh, search it means you just write order by order by search operator and automatically you will uh, receive uh, your answer with KNN search okay so now KNN search is more rich in its functions and you may search uh, not only points close to points but also boxes in close to points okay uh, next uh, next is vacuum uh, vacuum can be parallel now it is uh, rather interesting but it, it is not really parallel it, it is just parallel in some extent I will describe it. Uh, another important thing which was made by the Rache, which we'll speak to today too I hope uh, that now after vacuum can be triggered not only by updates but also by inserts it's very important for databases which have inserts only workload so what is parallel vacuum just you uh, have a new option of vacuum command you can uh, say that it is parallel with some number or it can be parallel by default uh, the idea is that different indexes on the same table can be vacuumed in parallel so if you have just one big table with one index it will not help you but if you have a table with multiple indexes then this helps of course we want more we want that uh, sometime we'll, we'll be able to make a vacuum of one table and one index in parallel but not now and uh, the next feature a vacuum triggered by inserts uh, so uh, before this patch we had problems with index only scans because visibility maps were not updated without vacuum and vacuum was not running because uh, there was uh, nothing uh, nothing to do for this vacuum according to the of the vacuum uh, running criteria but now there are more running criteria which are described by these parameters which you see on the screen and uh, uh, auto vacuum can be launched automatically on uh, such append only tables so visit visibility maps will be updated uh, all this will work automatically replication several features with replication uh, what are replication slots replication slots are in fact some kind of queue 
where, uh, where uh, wall uh, files or records are stored un until they are consumed by the standbys. Uh, it is dangerous because sometime, sometimes when standby doesn't work, uh, the wall files can be accumulated in the slot and uh, you can run out of disk space. That's why um, people created this parameter which uh, can limit the space. It is integer in megabytes. You specify the maximum number of megabytes which is used for the walls. If it is, uh, if you run out of this size, then just your slot will become unusable, but your disk will continue to work. It will not be overflowed. So dangerous, but useful in some cases parameter. Another thing connected with logical replication is the parameter which helps to specify how much memory can be uh, used for accumulate the logical replication data uh, before spilling it on disk. The problem is that when you, uh, for example, use uh, large long-running transactions, uh, the transactions are not replicated unless they are committed and all the data is collected somewhere, somewhere on the um, primary node. If you do this, uh, if you specify this parameter, you can increase the number of mem the amount of memory which is used for storing this data and uh, avoid spilling the data on disk. So it will make logical replication faster and uh, save also disk I.O. Very important parameter, especially for large transactions. There is also a patch that allows to uh, transmit the logical replication data through the network before commit, but uh, this patch is not yet committed. Uh, another feature connected with replication is the possibility to change the primary node seamlessly. It means without restarting uh, the replica. The connection parameters to the primary node, which is the connection string and uh, replication slot name. Now you can uh, change without restarting the replica and that's why uh, you can make the uh, switch over in your cluster much faster and uh, probably without downtime for those clients which are connected to the secondary nodes. Partitioning. Uh, there is much work about partitioning. Uh, several people are working and several people are committing with this. Uh, and uh, the partitioning is becoming integrated with other features such as logical replication and it becomes more convenient with each version of Postgres. Uh, so now it is possible uh, to uh, to make easier joins with partitioning. So there were partition-wise joins, which means that if you join two partition tables, uh, optimizer will understand that you may uh, join partition with partition. But uh, before 13th version, it was possible only if uh, boundaries of partitions match exactly. Now it is not required. Uh, now it is enough if partition tables just have uh, same partition key. Uh, and maybe some other, some other small restrictions. But uh, the main idea is that now uh, you can uh, change, you can uh, partition the tables, uh, for example, into different number of partitions into partitions of different sites, you don't need to synchronize the partition boundaries. And it is very con convenient if you have several tables partitioned with the same key, but with, but into different parts. You can now join them 
easily without uh, so the, the plans of join queries will be much easier. Uh, replication with partitioning. Now you can replicate as well as from partition tables and to partition tables. So now if you uh, publish a table which contains partitions, uh, then the partitions will be published automatically and the changes will be trans uh, transmitted like uh, the root table uh, is changed. And replica may be partitioned or not partitioned. Uh, everything will uh, find its correct partition on replica automatically. Nothing is required. Okay, uh, recovery process. Now you can ignore invalid pages in recovery and uh, you uh, uh, can make re recovery fail if the target is not reached. So what is this? Uh, so recovery is the process of reading, loading the whole files in the database during the instant startup. Uh, if one of the whole segments have invalid page reference, which uh, in general it means that there, uh, you have a serious error with your database, there is some problem, probably uh, it is a result of uh, uh, some disk problem or network problem, uh, your database or your wall files are damaged, but uh, before now you just couldn't close these walls because uh, when Postgres found uh, such failure, uh, such uh, invalid reference, it just stopped. But now you have possibility to turn on the parameter to ignore invalid pages. It will lead you to loading the pages. Of course, it's dangerous, but in some cases, uh, getting a damaged but maybe working database is better than having nothing. So, to recover from uh, some disk problems, and to recover from maybe uh, situations with network failures and so on, uh, or recover from uh, bad backups, this feature, uh, this parameter can be useful. Another thing is recover target. So, recover target is a possibility to specify uh, some point uh, where to stop the recovery process. It exists uh, in Postgres, but now in this version you can uh, ask Postgres to make error if you have, for example, not enough walls to reach the target. Uh, so before that, for example, if you uh, promote a replica, but you have not enough walls, it will load those walls that it can and uh, start with this option, you can uh, uh, you can forbid it to start without loading enough walls, without reaching the recovery target. Okay. Other interesting things: uh, monitoring. Uh, so now, PG start statements uh, checks also planning. You can uh, find new fields there with number of planning actions and uh, time total and uh, average time of planning of the queries. Uh, PG start activity now can work with larger statements. So there was a limit in the buffer size. Uh, the buffer is the place where SQL query is stored. And uh, so you, you could not see large SQL queries completely. Uh, sometimes we work with SQL queries that are larger than 100 kilobytes, and that's why Mikhaslav Makarov made this patch to allow uh, work with queries up to 1 megabyte uh, in PG start activity. Okay, other, other important, uh, interesting things. Incremental sorting is a kind of uh, improvement of sorting algorithm, uh, evaluation of immutable functions uh, during planning. 
also sometimes can improve performance. Uh, memory bound hash aggregation saves uh, you from out of memory situations. Uh, so, truncation of tables is now faster. Uh, there is a very good, very interesting patch about partial code decompression. And uh, also, some performance improvement in PLPG SQL. So, what is incremental sorting? Suppose you have some almost sorted data. For example, you have uh, some index on two uh, columns on X and Y, and you need data ordered by X and Y and Z. So if you try to resort from the scratch, if you make the quick sort on the three keys, it is more expensive than just uh, take every pair of X and Y and sort it by Z. Uh, this is called incremental sorting. And this patch by Alexander Karatov was invented seven years ago, but committed only this year. Okay, next. Uh, such functions, which are called in from clause, and uh, actually they, the result is a constant. Now we can believe that such function will be evaluated only once not each time uh, if the result is used only once. Uh, hash aggregation. There was problem with uh, hash tables in some kind of aggregates when it just could uh, grow to a size much more than work mem without any limit. And sometimes it can uh, lead you to a situation out of memory, which of course is not good. And now you can limit uh, the size of uh, such hash tables by several parameters. Uh, so, for example, you can specify a multiplier, how many work mems you can uh, use for a hash table. And you can enable uh, writing all the exceeding data just to temporary files. It is good because it makes uh, work with progress more reliable. It, pro uh, it provides some protection for out of memory situations. Okay, uh, large table truncation speed up. The idea is just to reduce number of sequence scans of shared buffers, which uh, need to be cleaned up. So there were three sequence scans for free space map from uh, for the main data and from visibility map. Now it is done with only one scan, so it is some, not three times probably, it's not, not three times faster, but it's some faster. Toast. So toast uh, is a progress way to store large uh, values, which are um, stored in chunks, and the chunks are compressed. Uh, before this patch, uh, to get some part of the toasted data, you need to decode all, all the toast, all the toasted columns. But now it is uh, done partially unless you reach the requested parts of the uh, toasted data. By the way, it, it is a student's work which was done uh, under the Google Summer of Code program. Uh, and uh, the patches very compact and very effective. It can uh, give several times performance gain if you have, for example, one megabyte data, but you need to uh, decode some data in the beginning of the toast segment. Of course, if you um, need to decode all the toast the data or some part of it which, which is close to the end, then it, it gives no performance gain. Maybe it is even lower. So, 10 15 percent lower but if you need uh, not the end uh, and uh, maybe the beginning or somewhere in the middle of toasted data then it is quicker good very nice patch okay so PLPG SQL it 
комиссия Падьба Бай Константин Книжник, which is just Константин found some uh, additional work which is not necessary uh, for such arithmetical operations. They, in general, they can be done independently from database space, from database snapshot. And so for such computational tasks, you can get several times performance gains. Very interesting patch. Okay, so now I come to the end. Of course, you may read the full manual. There is also a blog post in our blog <coughs> of Progress Pro uh, with similar content about uh, Progress 13. You may read it. Of course, experiment yourself. Uh, there are many other interesting things in Progress 13. And uh, probably there will be interesting questions uh, to me. Also, there may be some questions that, uh, which mm -hmm. uh, require uh, some research. All of this is interesting, so welcome with your questions.